Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. Hello everybody. Welcome to Builder Buy. Just like the last two drives, we're going to do an unboxing, an install, and a test. This will be strictly a speed test. Now this Sabrent drive is the third drive of the three that we will have tested that are the second generation PCI Express 4.0. This is a nice little bag we got from Sabrent and it's uh, probably of all the Sabrent drives the first one we had that actually had Sabrent packaging on it. I won't turn it over to show the label, but you can see on this side it says Sabrent on it. So we're going to open this up. Hope everybody had a good Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We've been eager to get onto this drive. And I will say while we're getting this open, we're going to be doing some more stuff with NVMe. You guys have had a ton of questions about NVMe. We will do a bootable RAID NVMe. We'll do a complete install, a Windows install. Now in a couple of minutes I'll get suited up, but we're going to get this out of this bag first. Nice little bag. And there it is. Nice. Sabret Rocket 4 Plus. I like the packaging they put on these. Now they also include a Cronus. We don't recommend a Cronus. I feel like a broken tape recorder to keep saying the same thing over and over again, but we prefer Macrium Reflect. Your results may vary. Let's go overhead. So there's a sticker about the free Cronus. We've got a nice little plastic wrap on it we're going to open up. I'm going to try to gingerly slice that open so I can maintain the integrity of the box. I really like the way they're packaging their drives. I wish everybody else could take some lessons on this. There it is. Paper box and there's a nice little metal sleeve to keep it in. I like these. Very handy indeed. And that should just open right up. And uh, before I go any further, I need to suit up. So I'm set that aside. Get my cartoon gloves on. Now for those that are wondering, this is for ESD, electrostatic discharge. So we want to make sure we do not compromise the integrity of the computer. I've got my ground strap on, I'm grounded to the mat, which is grounded to the wall, and I've tested my ground. So, back to the drive. What I want to do is take a look at this. So I'll open it up gingerly, piece of paper, and they've got their little protection pad on top. We can pull that off, and there's the drive. And that's it. Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. Beautiful drive. Let's see if we can get a little closer on that. So what we're going to need to do Video cards, we're going to leave where it's at. we got some other stuff we're going to be doing where that's going to have to be moved, and I'll talk to you more about it later. We're going to need to pull out the uh, Thunderbolt card. So we'll just pull it out, set it aside, because the slot we need to get to is the black slot, which is number two. The primary slot we're going to leave alone. That's where the boot drive is at. These two slots that are underneath this Thunderbolt card, these two slots are the ones that are tied to the CPU. So and the other two, of course, are underneath the GPU. We're not going to mess with those because those two slots are tied. Those two M.2 slots are tied to the uh, chipset. So we're going after this one right here, which will be right in that area. So we'll pull this card out and then we can take this and stick it in. And now that we've done the unboxing, we'll do the install. I'll set that aside for the moment. Those unboxings are always fun. The so first thing we need to do is go ahead and pull out our Thunderbolt card. And I have already turned the power off, drained the power, turned the power supply off, disconnect power. I've worked on a lot of computers, but I tell you, I don't think I've ever worked on one computer as much as I have this one. Now, I will say, and I want to take a moment right quick while I'm thinking of it. For those of you that talk about taking these pads off, this is a good example on the Sabrent. If you notice that pad, that looks like a metallic pad. So... That pad I would not want to remove, even if I did want to advocate better thermal conductivity. That has um, that pad is on there for the purpose of helping to keep that drive cool. Now, for those of you that choose and want to take those off, that's your choice. We work with a lot of drives. We change a lot of components out. And it's difficult to figure out which drive is which, especially if they have no label on them. So we will not be taking the label off. But if those of you that want to take it off, that's your choice. There's also a label on the back, and that's a paper label on the back. We will not be taking that label off either. So label on the front, label on the back, and this front label is a metallic label. So that's there for thermal conductivity. What I will say, there's going to be two places for heat, and I don't expect heat to be even. We're not going to get into that. But I just want to mention that the, uh, the business end, which would be this end where it plugs in, 
My expectation would be that the controllers down here, that will be the end that will be the hottest. Then you've got the other two components, which would be the cache and the memory. That should not be as hot as the controller. And there's only one drive we've seen that's been a heat problem, and that was the uh, Plexter drives, which we don't use, we don't advocate. So for those of you who want to take the label off, be my guest. That's not something we're going to do. I've explained it, and I'll, if I, get, I have to explain it every time, I will. So I'm going to set this aside so we can pull this other drive out because Western Digital is still in here. So I've got my number one Phillips tip. And yes, I'm using a magnetic screwdriver. And this particular slot has the double screw. The top pulled off okay. I'm just checking that surface to make sure that's still in good shape. I've moved those so many times. Some vendors and some folks talk about replacing these silicone pads about every six months. The rate I'm going, I may beat that. Okay, so this is the Western Digital Drive that we tested last time. Now, theoretically, this Sabre Drive is supposed to be the fastest of the three. And how you'll know if it's a second generation is if you get 7,000 megabytes per second, then that's second generation. The first generation drives would run about 5,000 megabytes on PCI Express 4.0. And I will say, if you do not have a PCI Express 4.0 chipset, then I wouldn't buy a PCI Express 4.0 drive unless the price dictates. In other words, if it's less expensive, because it's uh, about bang for the buck. And I've got to find the sleeve to put the Western Digital up in, which is not much. Just don't care for the packaging that everybody else uses. Both Western Digital and Samsung, gosh, I prefer any static bags, but that's just me. So Western Digital drive sets aside. And uh, out comes the Sabrent. It's interesting looking at this drive is the thickness. This drive is thicker than the Western Digital. In fact, let me get that back out and I'll show you. Let's just leave that. We can set that right there. You can see that there at the bottom. And I'll show you. Now granted, we should see some difference in speed performance because this is a 2 terabyte. Whereas these other drives we've been able to get our hands on were 1 terabyte. You know, it is what it is. The Samsung was one terabyte. The Western Digital is one terabyte. But the Sabrent we got our hands on is a two terabyte. And that may end up being our boot drive now. Change one thing, changes everything. So I'll show you. This one that I'm holding. Let's see if we can get a little closer on that. So you can get an idea of that. So you get an idea of the thickness. Now the size 2280 is the same. 22 millimeters wide, about 80 millimeters long. That's the standard format. But the thickness here is just a little bit different. It's just a tad bit thicker. So that label on the back side is covering those components to protect them. I think that's a good idea to leave it. Now, on the back side of the Western Digital Drive, it's just like a clean slate. It's plain. You've got one little chip down here you can see. But everything here is just plain, nothing. All the business is on this side. And we leave the labels on so we can tell them apart. So I wanted to show you that. I think it's interesting. Is it relevant? Does it matter right now? I don't know yet, but I still like to take note. I like to, uh, I like to know what we're working with. Like some of the issues we found with the video card. You know, there's, there's ways to get around some of that that we dealt with. We may talk about that later. And I don't see this as a problem, but I wanted to make note of it. Because it's different. Okay, so we'll take this out. And the business end is right here. So we need to turn this around so we can install that. Beautiful drive. And even with my anti-static gloves, I do not want to touch those connectors. Why? It causes corrosion, that's why. Oxidation. So we'll set that little tin aside and insert that drive accordingly. And that locks over the sleeve on that screw. Now what I'll do is I'll start this with just pressure on that screw with that screwdriver. And there's a sleeve there I want to be sure I'm locked down on to get that screw started. So there's the standoff on the motherboard, and then the sleeve goes down on top of the NVMe drive. The heat sink goes on, and then the top screw goes onto that. And I need to put up a link up to those extra screws if anybody should ever have need for them. There's a kit listed that's work, that works for the Gigabyte and I believe MSI. If you know that, great. If you don't know that, it's good to know. So now we'll come back in with the 4.5 millimeter socket, secure that, and now we'll go back on top with the heat sink and then secure that. Kind of weird doing this with a video card on the right side, and heat sink is now secure. And that little bitty top screw we can put in with a number one Phillips to secure the heat sink. 
We will do another video about heat. It will probably be right after this or within two videos. I think you'll find it interesting when we start talking about testing for heat. Okay, heat sink is down. Now, y'all know the drill. We've got to uh, plug in the power. I'm gonna leave the Thunderbolt card sitting aside. It's intact, so we can get through this fairly quickly. I'll plug in power. I turn on power, I energize, and then we have to do two things. We're gonna go into the BIOS, verify and make sure we see the drive. Then we need to go into Windows and we need to initialize since it's a new drive. And for those of you that know about how to initialize a drive after it's been initialized the first time, fine and dandy. But for new folks who've not gone through this process, I'll just say this initialization is a one-time thing. We go into Windows, we go into Disk Management, we initialize, we format, we get a drive letter, then we can test. So, plugged in, turn on the power, and turn on the computer. Okay, we're in advanced mode. I will go to easy mode, F2, and we will take a look at M.2, and there it is. So our boot drive is a Seagate Firecuda. The second drive that we're getting ready to test now is the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. So we have M2M and M2Q. And if I want to double check, I'll go back to the advanced mode, F2. We'll go to boot, and there's that drive. Now let's reboot, go back into Windows. F10, save configuration exit, yes. Windows, here we come. When we do the video about heat on these drives, it's interesting because there's five different ways we can do heat. Uh, what we'll do is start with the simplest solution and and I'll walk through those I just want to mention it now so for those of you that are interested in that aspect um, I think it might be interesting um, from my perspective as well as your perspective well I'll say that until we get to that computer post we're waiting for it to come up we're also going to be doing another video about how to regain slot number four so what we're going to do for the test to get slot number four back is we're going to put in a 4K capture card. So which means the video card has to go back to slot number one, which means for now, for the test, we'll swap that out so we can get everything installed. So we're going to put the 2080 Ti back in because it takes up two lanes. So we can have the Thunderbolt 3, so we can have the uh, Gigabyte Aorus M.2 quad card, and then put in a 4K capture card. It's all about resources and see if it's going to work on the BIOS. Somebody had trouble with one of those cards of a different brand, of which there are two. The one we're going to use, I think you'll find interesting. Okay, back into Windows. Okay, we are up. Control panel. We will go to Administrative Tools. We will go to Computer Management. And once we get in Computer Management, a dialog box should pop up when we hit Disk Management. And this is what you see on the first time. And that's the disk that says to be initialized. For those of you that are not used to doing this, it's all part of the process. New drive, initialize. Initialize, then we can format, then we can do a drive letter. Simple. And for those of you that have done it before, let's keep it simple. Okay. The default is MBR. We don't want that. Somebody pointed that out to me one time. We do a lot of testing, so I must never take any of this for granted. And we need to make sure we have our specificity in order. So we're going to do this disk, which will be to initialize. This is disk number two by the system. How your system recognizes may depend on your drive order. We're not going to use MBR. We're going to go to GPT, and I'm not going to get into that for the reasons why. I will say that GPT is for 2.5 or larger. This is a uh, two terabyte. So if it were a four terabyte, it would automatically select GPT. So we'll say OK. And then once that is done, then the next step We'll find that disk again, disk two. We're gonna right click. We're gonna do a simple volume. We'll follow the uh, wizard. Welcome to the new simple volume wizard. Working on a single disk. We're gonna go to the maximum size. We're gonna click on next. We're gonna give it a drive letter of D. We're gonna click on next. Then we're gonna give it a label. And since this is Sabrent, we'll call it Sabrent. Makes it easier to figure out when you're testing. Sabrent Rocket, four, Plus, Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. That's the label we're going to give it. It makes it easier to figure it out. Yes, we're going to do a quick format. And no, we do not enable file and folder compression. This is strictly about the drive to do a test. Now, the wizard gives us a list of what it's getting ready to do so that we can then say yes or no. So we're going to say finish. When we're finished, it'll hit it. Another window pops up saying here it is ready. Quick format is just that fast. You could do a regular format, not necessary. Now that we have the label up, 
I can click on, let's say click on PC, and it shows the drives in this machine, of which there are three drives and a Blu-ray. And that happens to be the Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus. Right now it's drive D. So I'm going to close all this stuff up on the screen. Then we're going to call up the program that we're going to test with. Now we're using Crystal Disk 7. Yes, there's a new version of that program. And yes, if this was the first test we were doing, yes, we'd use the new version. But to keep everything apples and apples, we're going to use the same test on this drive so it's all the same. Now, when we go do the stuff with heat, we'll upgrade. We'll do that with a new version on all three drives. But when we do the test for heat, it's going to be strictly about heat as we do the test so we can show both those things at the same time. Uh, oh, there's more I want to tell you about it, but i got to save it. So let's test. Crystal Disk Mark. And we will test, not the C drive, but we want to test the D drive. And if there's any doubt, we'll go back to Windows Flag E, take a look at this PC, Sabrent Rocket 4 Plus, the D drive. Always good to double check. And let's test. Now, I expect this test to come in pretty close to the specs, which they said was 7100. I'm not going to flip the screen. We're going to stay just on this until it gets finished. I don't expect anything spectacular. I did expect better than that, but it's not done yet. So it's going to test out pretty close to the speed of the other two. Not bad. Two things can slow a drive down. One, heat, and over time they do slow down, but I don't see heat as an issue. Again, if there's heat's a problem, it's the controller that's the problem. My expectation on these drives, as with most of the NVMe drives, is going to be a usage capacity. In other words, 75% which means do not use that last 25% because the drive tries to save itself. It, it, uh, it'll slow down in performance as it tries to uh, maintain integrity. So you've got your regular memory, you've got your cache memory, and you've got your controller. And again, this is a two terabyte. I would expect it to be faster because it is larger capacity. Larger capacity writing to more memory, bigger cache. That's still respectable. It's not 7100, but 6999. But we're not finished yet. We'll let it finish. But I wanted to do this so we have these three of the basics. So that then when we do the heat test, what I want to show is speed with heat. In other words, I'll put up the numbers for all three of the drives in this video. So those of you who want to look at those stats. But I want to get this up. And I should have had this up sooner. It's just questions come first. Whenever you guys have a question, that's what I'm here for. That's what I try to answer. And then uh, we get to the videos. And we got a ton of stuff we've got to get to. Wow. Now that's impressive because if you'll notice, here we are just under 7,000 megabytes on the read. And our write is really respectable. That's almost, I think that's be the best write of the three, 6830. I got to go back and check the specs and check the stats because they're supposed to be at 7,000 for the other two drives. And this is supposed to spec out at 7,100. 69.99 megabytes per second and 68.30 megabytes per second on the right. That's pretty cool. When we got the other two drives, which were the Samsung and the uh, Western Digital, we couldn't get a one terabyte drive. We were lucky to get one drive. With this drive on the Sabre, we got our hands on a two terabyte, which I thought was pretty cool. And it's interesting, the uh, drive that's in there that's a boot was a four terabyte. Happened to be the Sabre, but it was a first generation PCI Express 4. And after we went through all that rigmarole, we then relegated that it would be the second drive for its instruments. So then we went to the Seagate Fire Cuda, and now here we are going full circle, coming back to a Sabrent drive that looks like it's going to be the boot drive. How curious. And we've got some other NVMe quad cards we've got to test and just to be able to compare. Okay, it has finished the test. So, numbers stayed the same. And again, there's nothing scientific about this. 6,999 megabytes on the read and 6,830 megabytes on the right. Pretty consistent, pretty significant, pretty pleased. So with a two terabyte, 75%, I can live with that. I will also mention right now, I'm not gonna show it. Sabrent also has software, so do the other manufacturers. Uh, there's some interesting information and stats about each one of the drives according to the manufacturer's own application. When we talk about the heat, I may get into some of that. And if necessary, I'll do a separate video on each one of the applications so we can keep it short. Our goal with this was, was to do an unboxing, an install, and a speed test. 
I think we've accomplished that goal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I want to thank everybody for watching. This is Builder By. Next video coming up. We're out. <laughs>